Hey YouTubers, in today's video I'm going to show you something that I made from an old desktop computer's hard drive, one like you see right over here. I took that hard drive and converted it into a variable speed diamond grinding tool, just like you see right here. On YouTube there are several of these conversions shown. The great majority, if not all of them, do not have a diamond disc like you see here. What they did, they took the existing disc that was in there and they glued sandpaper on top. Now, I prefer the diamond, of course. It's going to last a lot longer. But there is a little more work involved because you're going to have to remove the disc. Now, before I get started with anything here explaining how I did this, the first thing you're going to have to do is completely disassemble the hard drive on both sides. To do that, you're going to require a very small Torx or star bit screwdriver to completely disassemble the hard drive. You're going to take everything apart, including the disc that was right here, as well as the ring that was on top. So all of that's going to come off. You're going to remove everything that was in here, the head where it was bolted down with the magnets. The head reached over to here, moving back and forth. On the back side, all right. There was a circuit board right over here. That's where you plugged in to your computer. You're going to remove the circuit board. You want nothing left. Now, on this side, you can see that I screwed in rubber feet to have a nice base for this diamond grinder. To do that, I found areas where there was nothing in the way, drilled holes, and then using a tap, I tapped the holes so I'd be able to screw these rubber pieces down securely on the back of the hard drive. When the circuit board is removed, you're only going to have three terminals going to the motor. Once everything's been disassembled, all you're going to have is the aluminum body with just the motor in the middle, and it looks like what you see right over here. The next step, you're going to have to go to Harbor Freight or online and pick up one of these 4-inch diameter metal grinding diamond discs. On both sides of the disc, there's grit. So when one side gets worn out, I could flip it over. You're going to look for a washer, which has a diameter very similar to the piece that you took off, holding this disc down. So as you can see, this right here is very close in size. And this is also going to be a template, because there's three holes. You're going to line it up on the washer and drill the same three holes. The hole that you see here in the original one is going to have to match the hole in the washer. You can use a drill along with a reamer to get to the correct size. The screws that were there, these three, work just fine. You're also going to need an ESC, which is right here. It's an electronic speed controller. This is designed for use in quadcopters. It's rated 30 amps, of course. You're not going to go anywhere near the current of 30 amps. You're only going to be drawing maybe 200 to 300 milliamps to run this motor. And these are very inexpensive. Matter of fact, I only paid $4 and change for this one right here. I'll place a link in the video description area where you can find this very easy and also save some money. My power supply I found in the trash right over here. This is a switch mode power supply, 12 volt, 750 milliamps. Once again, you could probably get by on 250 to 500, so give it a shot. It should work fine. You're going to need a couple of nylon ties. I drilled a hole right here, all the way through, one on the opposite side, straight through. Use the nylon tie to hold the speed controller nicely in position. Over here is where all the wires connect to the back side of this. Now, you notice this is three wires coming out. How this works, you have a DC input in this case 12 volts. The motor is an AC motor or three phase motor. So you're taking the DC voltage, converting it into a AC or pulsed output using these three wires. So what I did is I took the center wire. I don't think it makes any difference where they go, but my center wire goes on the center connector over here. And then the other ones can go on either side solder it onto those connectors, make sure there's no bridging, apply some silicone sealant, and you're all done on this side. Once you pick up this disc right here, it's not going to fit in easily. 
you're going to have to modify it by taking a chainsaw file and grinding three areas on the inside of that circle in the hub area where it's going to be positioned on the three-phase motor. And you can see right here in this image exactly what it looks like when it's done properly. It is very important that the disc is centered as much as possible because if it's not centered properly you'll have excessive vibration and you'll destroy this motor over time from that vibration. Over here on this wire you can see you have a brown, a red, and an orange. Now when you apply 12 volts to the speed control module it's going to supply a 5 volt regulated output. The brown is negative, 5 volt negative. Positive would be the red. And the orange wire is a signal wire. In order for the ESC to power up this AC motor, this three phase motor, it's going to require a signal. The 555 circuit you see here delivers pulses varying width right through here using the potentiometer. And when those pulses are sent into this ESC, it's going to know how fast or slow the motor should be spinning. The circuit is very easy to put together. There isn't much to it. I'll place a link in the video description area to the schematic. First thing you're going to hear is some beeping coming from the electronic speed controller. Now I'm going to turn on right here. You can see the LED. Hopefully you can see that. All right, it gets brighter as you increase the speed on the motor. Here we go. Right there is max speed, and it hardly vibrates. It's got the gyroscopic effect from that spinning. Slow it down. If you go too far, then it, the pulse is wrong and it turns it back off. Right there, it's off. You'll hear it come back in. Right there. That's max speed. Right there. And that's going that way. Very nice. Slow it back down. Let's put it right there. I think it's almost leveled off. Let's go faster. Yep. Let's go to there. This mark right here, I try and keep right there as the low point 
if I go too far back, then the pulse becomes affected. I have to turn this off and on again in order to reset it. A little lower. Moving pretty slow. Zoom it back up. Thing is cruising. Pretty neat. I can turn the switch off, no more pulses, that'll realize it and shut it down. If you have a problem putting this together where it's not working properly, play around with the potentiometer setting, maybe put stops on it so you don't go too far back or too far forward. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.